Lindsay. <laughs> She's Lindsay, I'm Penny. We are so excited to be back for another week of VC Kids, right? Mm -hmm. And we have been talking about what this week, Penny? Determination. Determination. Do you remember what determination is? Deciding it's worth it to finish what you start. Deciding it's worth it to finish what you start. Did you need determination this week at any point? Yeah, it's, I had a little hard time doing my spelling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you remember to keep going? Um, my mom helped me or I just stopped crying because I cry a lot. Um, you get frustrated when you're doing school sometimes and cry? I bet other people do too. I get frustrated with hard things too, like starting a big project, getting bored, or getting frustrated, or feeling overwhelmed, and then not wanting to finish. Do you feel that way sometimes yeah. too? Yeah. So we're gonna talk more about determination, and what is our verse for the week? Do you remember? Can you read it for us, oh, nice and loud? yes. Let us not become tired of doing good at all, at the right time we will gather a crop if we do not give up. Galatians 6, 9. Yes. Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we do not give up. Right. So, um, we've been looking at... Actually, let's, let's wait a second. Um, when you put something in the ground to grow it, because it's spring, right? Um, does it come up right away? No. It doesn't. You kind of got to wait, don't you? Uh -huh. A little bit. And then you get the beautiful flower or you get the tomato or the strawberry. Uh -huh. Weeks and weeks and weeks later, sometimes months, it takes 95 days to grow a watermelon. Did you know that? Yeah. So um, let us not grow tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we do not give up. So the good stuff is coming if we just keep doing it. Um, the fruit, the reward, the blessing, it's all coming if we don't give up. And giving up sometimes, that takes determination, so you don't give up. So this month, we've been looking at what happens um, to the church after Jesus has ascended and um, what his disciples faced um, in the world around them and what they came up against. And so we are going to hear from Peter and John in Acts 3 and 4 of our lesson today and hear how they discovered the source of determination. So we will see you after our lesson. Hey guys, it's Haley. Great to see you here again at my sticky studio. Well, this week I've really got a challenge. And I mean an actual challenge. You see, my friend Jake challenged me to a pancake decorating contest. Pancakes! And I'm only allowed to use things that people actually eat on pancakes. <laughs> Hard, oh, I mean yum, chocolate syrup. Yum, regular syrup, a classic. Strawberry spread, modern. And of course, whipped cream, another classic. For all your holiday needs and pancake decorating contests, I'm covered. Now, the first challenge is to make a giraffe. Yeah, this looks good. Oh, it needs ears. Duh, Haley. Oh, we gotta get spots. Oh, uh, not as good as I thought it would be. <laughs> hmm, well, ooh, this sure is sticky. I'm still supposed to create three more images to compete with Jake. You know what I need? Some determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. Today's story is about two of Jesus' disciples, Peter and John. They were determined to spread the truth about Jesus and follow the Holy Spirit's leading no matter how hard things got. Well, well I think I'm feeling more determined just thinking about it. I can do this! Oh no, oh no. I'm, I'm just gonna clean this up first. Be right back. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, 
Stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Acts, chapters 3 and 4. John found himself nearly skipping as he and Peter made their way up toward the temple. More than 3,000. More than 3,000 people are following Jesus now. I've never seen anything like it. The way people are sharing their homes, their food. Every day a few more people believe. This tell the whole world gig is going more smoothly than I expected. As Peter and John approached the temple gate, they saw a man lying on a mat. Please help me. We'll call the man Ezra. For his entire life, he'd been unable to walk a single step. Could I have a few coins for food? Peter and John looked directly at the man. Peter could feel the power of God's spirit rising inside him. Look at us. Ezra fixed his gaze at the disciples and held out his hand. I don't have silver or gold, but I'll give you what I do have. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Peter reached out and took Ezra's hand. Instantly, his feet became strong. He leapt to his feet. Wait, what? How? He took a step, a skip, a hop, and a jump. Praise Jesus! Ezra began to dance and spin around. This guy couldn't even walk 10 minutes ago. And as you might guess, a big crowd gathered. Peter called out loudly. Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? It's not as if we've made this man walk by our own power or godliness. God has done this. God has brought glory to Jesus who serves him. This man, whom you see and know, was made strong because of faith in Jesus' name. Faith in Jesus has healed him completely. Wowzers! So turn away from your sins and turn to God. Then your sins will be wiped away. But while the crowd was wowed, the religious leaders were fuming. They sent the captain of the temple guard to arrest Peter and John and sent them to prison. Preach it to the rats, boys. What's that you said about things going smoothly? God's Holy Spirit is still with us, even here. The next day, a group of religious leaders, including the high priest Annas and his family gathered together. They ordered the guards to bring Peter and John before them. By what power did you do this? And through whose name? Peter didn't hesitate. Rulers and elders, do you want to know why we were kind to a man who couldn't walk? Are you asking how he was healed? Peter gestured to where Ezra was standing, not far off, watching. Ezra did a little two-step. The religious leaders glared. You nailed Jesus Christ of Nazareth to the cross, but God raised him from the dead. It is through Jesus' name that this man stands healed. You can't be saved by believing in anyone else. If mics had been invented, Peter would have dropped one right there. The leaders glowered and Anna's cleared his throat. Leave now and never come back until we call for you. Once Peter and John had been taken out, the leaders grumbled to each other. The nerve. These are common men with no training. So bold. I hate to say it, but... Say what? Well, the way they talk, you can tell they've been with Jesus. <laughs> But what can we do with them? Everyone in Jerusalem knows they performed a miracle. We can't say it didn't happen. This stops here. It stops now. We give them a warning. Never speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. Ah, yes, that's it. Peter and John were brought to stand before the religious leaders again. You must never speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. Yes, or, or, or else. Peter and John exchanged a glance. They knew these leaders had the power to lock them up or even kill them. Which is right from God's point of view? Should we listen to you? Or should we listen to God? You be the judges. 
There's nothing else we can do. We have to speak about the things we've seen and heard. Ooh, just don't do it! The leaders couldn't find any reason to keep Peter and John in prison. So, they finally let them go. Yes! Exploding fist bumps, my bros! Peter and John returned to their friends and shared everything God had done. Through the power of God's Spirit, the number of believers had now grown to more than 5,000. Whoa, how amazing of a story was that? Peter and John were so brave. They were so bold and confident because the Holy Spirit gave them confidence. From Abraham to Joseph to David, God made amazing promises to save and bless his people. And Jesus was the ultimate fulfillment of God's many promises. After Jesus died, rose again, and went back to heaven, his disciples knew it was their job to share the good news about Jesus. And once they had the Holy Spirit, they were able to do so. Just think how Peter and John healed that man with the power of God, and then lots of people learned about Jesus. Or how they didn't back down when religious leaders questioned them. They were determined to finish what they started. And because they relied on God, they did it with confidence. And you know who else has been throwing down some confidence? <laughs> it's your girl, Haley. Woo, take a look. Just look at these masterpieces. Okay, so I guess they're not the greatest pancake paintings you've ever seen, but I wanted to complete Jake's challenge, so I, I did my best. Sometimes it's easy to want to quit something when suddenly it gets difficult, like maybe learning how to ice skate, or reading a new book was easy at first and then it got harder. But it's always worth it to finish what you started. That's the one thing to remember today. Keep going even when it gets tough. Well, that's all I've got for you today, kiddos. Now, the only question is, what am I gonna do with all these extra pancake toppings? Mm -hmm. Hello, we're back. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It was an awesome lesson. So, Peter and John, were scared probably, right? Um, but they kept going, right? And they could not deny the things that they had seen and experienced and they had to speak about them, right? And the Holy Spirit was with them and gave them courage. Um, and when you get stuck or I get stuck or Penny gets stuck, God helps us get unstuck, right? Um, we can keep going even when it gets hard because we can make the right choice, the wise choice, just like Peter and John did. Um, to keep going because the Holy Spirit is with them and God is with us. So, mm -hmm. yes. Um, do you want to quit sometimes? Yeah, sometimes we want to quit. Sometimes we want to get tired. But did Peter or John quit? No. Did Jesus ever quit on us? No. no, he endured to the very end, didn't he? Right. God never quits. God never gets tired, right? We're frustrated but with us, but he knows that we do, right? And so he loves us and he has given us everything we need to keep going and to be determined and to not give up so we can reap a harvest or a crop, right? In the right time. So what we have for you is an idea from our lesson today. Um, I, we have some verses that you can um, hold on to and maybe... Um, if you want to, maybe you can get notes if you have yeah, totally. Take notes, go grab a pen and some paper, and you can write down these verses. And actually, it's suggested that maybe make a poster and put it in your room or like decorate it. And um, and then that way, when um, you when things get hard or you feel scared or you feel bored because you're in the middle of a big project or a hard assignment or you lose a game, you know, um, or like this time where we have to stay home and we can't be meeting in church. You can always pray about these um, verses and just say, God, can you please help me do something if um, you're like going through a rough time? Yes, exactly. I do that, you do that, right? That's how God helps us. Um, okay, so when the going gets tough, we can keep going. Let's remember that. Okay, so do you want to hold them up? Hold up one at a time and I'll read them and our friends can copy them down. Maybe they can get a big piece of paper and write them down or... 
Or just get one and then um, use your own clipboard if you have it. And then like take your sheet out and then use the next one. Yeah, sure. That's a good idea. So what do we have first? Hold them up one at a time. Okay, this is James 112. It says, blessed is the person, or blessed, blessed is the person who keeps on going when times are hard, right? Blessing, God has blessing for us if we keep going. Um, Psalm 54, four says, the Lord is the one who keeps me going. This one says, John 14, 27 says, well, I leave, oh, these are the words of Jesus. This is what Jesus says to us. I leave my peace with you. I give my peace to you. If I do not give it to you as the world does, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And then we have one more. This is the last one. Philippians 4, 13. I know lots of people know this one. I can do all this by the power of Christ. He gives me strength. Okay, friends, we want you to be encouraged and have determination to finish what you start and to not give up and that you can do it and that there is, um, that God is with you every step of the way. The Holy Spirit is with you every step of the way and, um, and we love you. So let's just pray and then we're probably going to go swimming because it's hot. Yeah. Okay. Um, dear God, thank you so much for being with Peter and John and for being with us. Thank you, um, God, that we, we can keep going even when it gets hard, that that's the spirit that you put inside of us. As believers, we are not quitters. We are overcomers. And so, God, I pray for all of our friends here, um, and I just ask, God, that you um, would just encourage them in your love and in your power um, to not give up and to remember where their help comes from. Their help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth and that we can continue and press on and, and finish what we start, um, just as Jesus finished all the way to the cross on our behalf for love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. <laughs>